have a look at this. It's called a bifurcation diagram and it has become an icon of chaos. In fact, you can probably get t-shirts with this printed on it. But what is it and what might it mean for social science? Now you'll all be familiar with plotting an equation on a set of axes. So if we take the equation y equals mx plus c, which everybody will know from high school, it's the equation of a straight line, we would plot that on a set of axes. We've got y and we've got x, and it would look something like that. Now with a bifurcation diagram, it's a way of plotting an equation like that, that has been iterated. Now, what does that mean? Well, well, we'll come to that in a minute, but what you need to imagine is taking the x-axis and bending it up and plotting it alongside the y-axis like that. And it becomes something like that. Now, how can we do that? Well, the reason we can do that is because of this concept of an iterated equation. So if we take this example, to iterate the equation y equals mx plus c, what we would do is we would, instead of having x there, we would have an alternative version of y. And what this means is the next value of y is calculated using the current value of y. So to start this off, we think up a value for y, maybe it's just one, and then we calculate the next value of y equals m times one plus c, and that gives us our first result. And then that first result goes back to become the next value of y here, the current value of y, and the current value of y would be used to calculate the next one. So if m was 2 and c was 0, so if that was 2 and that was 0, y1 would equal 2 times 1, which is 2. y2 would equal 2 times the value here, which is 2 times 2 equals 4. y3 equals 2 times this one, which is 8, and so on. And we would plot those values here. And you can see that the value there is going to race off upwards to infinity. Okay, so that tells you what's going up here on the, uh, on the on the up axis, but what goes across here on the x axis? Well, the x axis is the value of a parameter of interest in the equation, and the parameter here was m, so this would be the value for m, which was two. And what we would do is we would plot the points, they're called orbits, or they're called, they're, they are called, called an orbit. We would plot the orbit for two, and then we'd move on and plot the orbit for three, and we'd go on and plot the orbit for 4, etc. Now with this equation, these are always going to race up to infinity as long as m is greater than 1. If m is less than 1, they will race down towards 0. And if m is exactly 1, they'll just stay as the same point forever. So it won't go up or down. So the bifurcation diagram that was shown at the start, a lot of equations generate a diagram that looks very similar to that. And these equations have a few things in common. And the first thing is that the result y, so the orbit of y, the, the, the result that comes out from, from iterating these equations, can either bounce about randomly, back and forth, up and down within a bounded range, or it can bounce about randomly for a while and then focus in on one point, 
It's called an attractor. And an example of that would be a marble on the edge of a bowl. If you release a marble on the edge of a bowl, it will go back and forth, back and forth, seemingly at random, but eventually it will settle down to the bottom of the bowl and not move again. Or it might bounce about up and down at random and then f focus in on two attracting points and it will go back and forth between them. Or it might bounce about and then focus in on four attracting points. And it might go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, over and over and over. And it might not be in that order, so it could go there, 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 there. Over and over and over again. Or it might go to eight, or it might go to 16. And that gives us our classic bifurcation diagram. At the start down here with values of the parameter at this end, we land on one attractor. So there, it might be there. Now it might bounce up and down first, but it lands there. And it does that over these values for the parameter, but at some point it splits into two. So again, it might bounce up and down here a little bit, but it focuses in on these two attractors. And it does that for a time, and then it splits again into four. And if we join the dots on this, we get the beginnings of our classic bifurcation diagram. That's called a pitchfork. And we get another pitchfork there. And what happens is, at these points, the number of attractors is doubling. So we've got two and then four, and then down here we might have eight, 16, 32, 64. Eventually, we will hit a chaotic region where we don't have the same pattern at all. where we don't have an attractor. And this is called the period doubling route to chaos. So we double, we double, we might double again and again, and then eventually we hit a chaotic region. Now the equations that do this are sometimes used to model real physical systems. So we've seen one of these before. It's, it was called the, the logistic equation or the logistic map. And it has been used to model population growth. There are other physical systems that we could model here in electronics, in um, heat convection, and in fluid uh, dynamics. So here we have a tap. The tap is turned off. That represents a parameter value of zero. If we turn the tap on full, that would represent the maximum value possible for the parameter here. And in between those two values, 0 to max, the water flow goes through a chaotic period. And in theory, the flow would get to that chaotic period by uh, this period doubling. Now, it is true that the tap must go through on its way to the maximum value on the way to its maximum value, it must go through the value that leads to the doubling here and the value that leads to the doubling here. But you would never be able to get your tap to that point. So in theory, your tap will start drip, 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 and then eventually go drip, 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 drip and then eventually go drip, 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 etc. So those period doubling in theory but you wouldn't be able to control your tap well enough to see it. So the question is, we've got chaos here from equations and chaos in theory from real physical systems. Could we have something like this 
from human experience, could there be a simple rule like one of these equations that could explain the root to that chaos? In other words, can the appearance of complexity come from the appearance of simplicity? So our equation appears to be reasonably simple. Our behaviour that results from it appears to be reasonably complex. Could it also be that there is a simple explanation for complicated human behaviour? Have a look at this. It's an agent model of a traffic jam and each of the cars here are following a very simple rule. They drive as fast as they can until they meet another car and then they match the speed of the car and reduce their speed a little. And this causes traffic jams. Every so often there will be a jam and the jam will be chaotic in that it cannot be predicted. Now what has all of this got to do with the bifurcation diagram? Well, here it is. This diagram was created by Benjamin Toledo and colleagues from an analysis of traffic jams. And if you like these videos, subscribe down at the bottom somewhere.